In section 5.7, we learn about a new way to write a linear equation instead of uh, some of these forms that we've learned before. So let's review some of the forms of a linear equation uh, that we've learned before. Remember, a linear equation is one that has an x and a y in it. It's a machine that could generate a table of values, inputs and outputs. So the one we've been working with most recently has been called slope-intercept because it has a slope and a y-intercept right there staring at you. y equals mx plus b is called slope-intercept form. Before that, we uh, graphed some things using the cover-up method, and we were also often given um, the linear equations in standard form. Standard form is ax plus by equals c. So the x and the y terms are on the left side, and the, the constant is on the right. a, b, and c have no meaning. They're just numbers. For example, like 2x plus 3y equals 6 would be an example of a linear equation in standard form. So again, remember, uh, linear equations have x's and y's in them and numbers. And when they're in certain forms, like this y equals mx plus b, sometimes the numbers have meaning. Like the number here in front of the x is called the slope, and the number at the end here, whatever it is, is the y-intercept of the graph. We're going to look at a third form now. But before we do that, uh, actually, let's look at some of why these are useful. Standard form is useful because it's uh, simple and we can all agree to write it that way. And it's also easy to use the cover-up method, 0 comma something, something comma 0, to graph this thing because we can cover up. Um, Slope-intercept form, how is that useful? Well, it's really easy to graph because you can harvest out the M and the B uh, to figure out the graph. Um, and that's really why this is so much, um, why this is a preferred way to write a linear equation. All right, a third form is called point-slope form. Sometimes you're given a point, and you're given the slope, and you want to write a linear equation. Now, we have actually done this before. It was called the solve for b method, and, and many students have troubles with the solve for b method. Well, the good news is we're going to have a pluggable formula instead of having to solve for b. And that's on the next screen here. So given a point x1, y1, and given a slope, we can write the equation. We put the x1 here, the y1 number here, and the m here. Let me be clear. x stays x, y stays y. All right, we just plug in the x1 number, the y1 number, and the m, and the x and y stay x and y, and then we have a machine. We have an xy equation. So let's look at an example now where we have been given a slope, and it's going to go through the point 5, negative 2. Now notice I've color-coded things. The slope is blue. The x is green, the x1, the x number, the input spot. Okay? And then the y1, the output number, is negative 2. So when 5 goes in, negative 2 comes out. Now, uh, what we're going to do is just literally plug in. So we're going to have y. Oops, I need to grab my pen. y minus equals x minus. All right, so let's plug in all the different things, and let's use our colors. So the Y1 is red. Okay, Y1 is red, and it comes from this Y1 value over here. So I'm going to put negative 2 in there. The formula itself has a minus sign in it. So it's Y take away whatever Y1 is. So we're going to have a double negative here, and that's okay. All right, let's now go to green. I'm sorry, blue, because our next thing is the slope. Okay, our slope here is one half, and that goes right here. So we're going to put one half in right there. Okay. And then we'll go to green to fill in the x1. Here is the x1 value. It is 5. All right, we're pretty well done. Um, we could probably write it a little bit nicer without the double negative. Might be a good idea. 
Uh, so the final answer would be y plus 2 equals 1 half times the quantity x minus 5. We don't do the distributive property because it said write it in slope point, I'm sorry, point slope form. Point slope form. This is called point slope form because we're able to plug in a point in the slope and we're done. All right, let's look at another example. In this example, the slope is going to be 5, the x1 is negative 3, and the y1 is negative 5. I'll go ahead and color code this one again. Uh, so we've got the formula is y take away whatever y1 is equals m times the quantity x take away whatever x1 is. So let's go through and fill in the numbers. Now, the common mistake is to put x1 here because, you know, it comes first, but it's y1, so that's the second number. So I have to pick red here, and we're going to put negative 5 in there. Okay, y minus y1 equals m. m is the blue number here. It is 5, so we put a 5 in right there. And then x minus x1, and x1 is green. So we're going to put the green number here. Okay, that, this is the x1. So we're going to put that in right there. Okay, so our final answer is y plus 5 equals 5 times the quantity x plus 3. We don't do the distributive property. We just leave it in this form because this is called point-slope form, and that's what it was asking us to do. All right, let's do one, one uh, quick problem here again. We're going to do y minus equals m times the quantity x minus x1. So y1 is 8. m is negative 3 fourths. And x, of course, x1 is 1. We do not put numbers in for x and y. That's a common mistake, is to somehow stick numbers in here. A linear equation is an equation that has an x and a y in it. That's the whole point here. So there's our answer. We're done. All right, what about this problem? We have to use a little bit of what's called problem solving. It's a multi-step problem. What if we're given two points and they want us to write the equation of the line? So graphically speaking, we're talking about here's 1, 5, and then here's 8, negative 7 is way down here. We want to graph the equation of the line that goes through those two points. Not graph, but we're wanting to write the equation of the line between those two points. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have a point. This could be our x1, y1. Okay, but we don't know the slope. We need an m and we need a b in order to plug into y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. Okay, we need to know the m. Well, how could we figure that out? Well, we have a formula for that. Slope is change in y over change in x. You need to subtract the y's and subtract the x's. So negative 7 minus 5 all over 8 minus 1 is negative 12 over 7. That's what m is. Okay, so that was step 1, was to figure out the slope. Step 2 now is to just plug into our formula we learned today which is right here on the screen. y minus y1 equals m times quantity x minus x1. So y minus negative 7 equals 1 times the quantity x minus 8. I put my y1, my m, and my x1 all in the correct places. And finally, I will write my final answer will be y plus 7 equals, if you want to write the 1 there, that's fine, x minus 8. There's the answer. So sometimes you're, you're actually not given the slope, but you have enough information to figure it out. Now, why didn't we use this? Um, this is x2, y2. Well, it wasn't in the formula here, but we did use it to figure out the slope. So it, it, we did need to know that. All right, let's do one more quick problem. Uh, where we're only given two points because this is a two-step problem. Step one is to figure out what the slope is. 
So slope is going to be, I'm going to go left to right, negative 4 over 2, that's your delta y, over your 1 minus 3. That's negative 6 over negative 2, which is positive 3. So the slope is positive 3. We can now plug in to our formula. Our formula is y minus y1 equals m times quantity x minus x1. So we plug in our three numbers. Our three numbers are 3, 2, and 3. We've got to put them in the right places, though. We've got y minus, whoops, y minus 2, that's your y1, equals 3 times the quantity x minus 3. There's the answer. This is called point-slope form of a linear equation. It has an x and a y in it. It's a machine. Input and output table could be generated from this thing, and it will generate a line that goes through those two points. Okay, final question. This is actually a three-step problem. We're going to write an equation that goes through these two points. Well, that sounds familiar. But our final answer is going to be in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form. That's y equals mx plus b form. Now, we don't know what b is, and we don't know what m is. So what we're going to do is step one, we're going to figure out what m is. That's 5 minus 7 all over 1 plus 1, which is negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. All right, so that's m. Step 2, we are going to plug in to y minus y1 equals m times quantity x minus x1 and get a linear equation on our paper, y minus 5. I'm going to use the first point, the one on the left. You can use either one, by the way whatever your favorite one is, they'll both work, x minus 1. Okay, and then step 3, this is the new one here. We now have to, we're going to solve for y equals mx plus b form. Here we go. A um, couple things. Let's do the distributive property first. We get minus x plus 1 equals y minus 5, and then we add 5 to both sides. The answer is y equals mx plus b. y equals negative 1x plus 6. So that was a three-step problem. We had to figure out the slope. We had to plug into point-slope form, point-slope form, because we didn't know what b was, and then we simply use a little bit of algebra trickery to get it into y equals mx plus b form. All right, good luck on the assignment. This is an important um, section and another important form that you're going to use for the rest of high school here. So you need to get to know this and, and do a good job on the homework so that you memorize this equation. Made with DoodleCast Pro.